In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate measures of central tendency from a frequency distribution for an integral level variable. Now we're back here in our workbook, 0405, Interval Frequency, Central Tendency, and we're in the worksheet TOES-CT for Central Tendency. And if you want to look ahead and see where we're going with this, you can look and see um, the completed table here. So, in order to calculate central tendency, there's a few things we have to do first. We have to make a few extra columns. So, first of all, we can do, before we do anything, from a frequency distribution, we can easily see the mode. So the mode, as I mentioned in the previous video, is five. So most people, the overwhelming majority of people have five toes. Okay. So it occurs more often, it's the biggest frequency. And that's all the mode is. So the mode is five. And I can say that the most commonly reported number of toes on the right foot was five. make that, I can merge these cells using the merge button, and then I can wrap them hitting the wrap button. Okay. Now, for the median, we're going to need to calculate the cumulative percentage distribution. Now, remember the rule. The rule is, in most cases, if a value or category in a cumulative percentage distribution is not exactly 50%, then the median will be the first value or category that is greater than 50%. Now, we'll look at what this means. Let's, but first, let's calculate the cumulative percentage distribution. So cumulative percentage. And now, in order to calculate that, just like we've done previously, the first percentage is just going to be this one over the total. Enter. Now, this is the one where we're going to have to input a formula that's going to be uh, a little different than this one. So we're going to have to hit equals. We want the one right above this. Remember, for cumulative percentage distributions, we're always doing the one above it plus the one to the left. Now we're doing this one, and we want to make this a percentage. So this one was this divided by this. But to make this a percentage, we're doing this one divided by the total as well. And now for this, we're going to have to lock it hitting F4. Now that we have this formula here, we're doing this one plus this percentage. Now when we copy this down, it's always going to be the one right above it, the one right to the left of it, divided by the total. Okay. Control enter. And it's giving me numbers there, because the number can't fit in there. Make this a little wider so you can you can see it. But I'm gonna format that shortly, so I won't worry about that right now. Okay. So now let me do my formatting, the home tab. I want to make sure they're all percentages like that. Um, alternatively, I could have clicked on this button, but then I want to make sure that I have some um, decimal points. So I'll add the two decimal points like that. Now, this is what we had generated before on the previous one. This is just a different way of doing it. It basically cut out one step. Um, we calculated percentages within each one rather than making a percentage column. So now what I said here is that the rule is that the median is generally the value which just makes it over 50% in the cumulative percentage distribution. So which value, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, makes it over 50% over here? Ah, this one. Okay. So this is the value, the 5. 5 is the median. Okay, so the median is 5. Now, what is this telling us? This is telling us that with 
respect to the number of toes that people have on their right foot, the number five splits the distribution in half. Okay, we're finished with our median now. So the last one is the average. Now for the average, we're going to have to use a formula. Our formula for the average is the sum of all of the cases divided by n. But when we have a frequency distribution, we're going to have to add all those cases divided by n. We have to remember that there's that many of those values. Okay, there's f of the values. So I'm going to make my column. I always like to label things nice and clearly. So this is x times f. And how do I calculate x times f? Well, this here, I can just indicate for myself here, this is x. And the number of people in this category, that's f. I'll make this a little wider so it'll, it'll fit here. Now for this formula, I just hit equals x times f. So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying the number of people in this category. So there is one person who has zero toes. Enter. Now I'm going to double click this down. And you can see that it's formatted this as a percentage, which is what I don't want. So in order to make sure that I go back up here in our home ribbon, the number formatting box, I want to select general, no specific format, because these are numbers, they're not percentages. Great. Now what I want to do in that formula is to add up all of the x's times the f's. So the xf, this xf plus this xf plus this of them, in order to do that, we know how to create a sum. It's going to add up if I hit alt equals. Alt equals. It's going to automatically add up the adjacent cells. So it's going to be d3 through d9. Enter. So this is the numerator of our average formula. And our denominator is going to be n total number of cases. Bringing back up that PowerPoint slide this one more time, you can see the formula here is the sum of x times f divided by n, which is the total number of cases. So, the sum of x times f, the total of all of the xf's, divided by the total number of people. Okay. So now our average is 4.79. We round, we do the 5. So because it's a 5 after the 8, we have to round the 8 up to 9. And this is telling us that the average number of toes that people in the sample had on their right foot at the time of the interview, at least, was 4.79. Okay, and that's it. So we can see here that the number of toes, the average, it kind of makes sense that it would be a little under five, because there's a bunch of values here that are below five, and they're pulling it down. So again, we can say that this distribution is also negatively skewed, because the mean is less than the median. So because the mean is less than the median, this distribution is negatively skewed.